Hey guys, welcome back. Day 36. We have solution stoichiometry and we got concentration today. All right, first I want to dive into concentration, right? Which is molarity. All right, and this is going to be temperature dependent. And you may ask why? Well, it's molarity. It's capital M. And it's moles per liter. Now, it's moles of solute per liter of solution. Right? Solution, which is the total volume. And volume is temperature dependent. So that's why molarity is temperature dependent. But it's moles per liter. Now, a lot of times we'll do it moles per liter like this. Sometimes we'll do it, two more ways we'll do it. I'll do it moles per 1,000 milliliters because that's the same thing, right, as a liter. And if we look at moles of liter again, you can put a millimoles per milliliter, and it's the same thing because you're dividing the top and the bottom by a thousand. That's still molarity. Okay. And so we like this. And I really like this because of the fact that we are in moles. It's a ratio, right? So this is again, this is just a ratio, but we are in moles, which is nice. Right. And so this is molarity is a ratio of solute to volume. All right. So first example, let's calculate the molarity. All right. So that's what we're going to do. Calculate the molarity. The solution by taking 40 grams of sodium hydroxide into two liters of water. And we're going to assume this is the total volume. All right. And so, if I have 40 grams sodium Na plus, hydroxide, OH minus, hopefully you recognize hydroxide as a polyatomic ion, get the charge. So it's got 40 grams of NaOH. And we know we have 2.00 liters. Now, let's look at our units. Grams, not good. We want to get that to moles, right? Because molarity. And if you need to do this for the molarity here, if you need to point out that this is moles of NaOH per liter, go ahead, write that down. So the liter is good, but the grams is not. we got to go to moles. And how do we do that? Well, we know that one mole of sodium hydroxide is how many grams? Well, sodium is 22.99 plus 16 plus 1.01. .01. It's 40. How nice. 40.00 grams. So that gives us a molarity of 0.5. So there is an example of a calculation with molarity in it. Now, another concentration that we need to know about is the pH scale. All right, pH scale. What is pH? Well, mathematically, right, we care about Here's the expression, negative log, all right? And then it has these brackets, and it's H3O plus. Or, because I want you to know that H plus is the same thing as H3O plus for our purposes. Same thing. H plus, or H3O plus, the hydronium ion, the pH, is another condition. All right, of the water, of the solvent, okay? 
how acidic or basic something is. All right. So in pure water, the concentration of hydronium, so these brackets, the brackets equal molar molarity. Might not be so clear. So in pure water, our concentrations are 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar at 25 degrees Celsius. So it's small, right? And so the pH negative log 1 times 10 to the negative 7th is 7.0. So neutral, the pH is 7, and we are at 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7th. Okay. All right. We can get all the way down acidic. We'll do 0, 1, 3, 5. All right. Basic, we will do, what do you want to do? Let's do 14, 12, 11, 9. Let's do it that way. All right. And so our hydronium ion concentration, we have 1.0 molar, 0 0.1 molar, 1 times 10 to negative third molar, 1 times 10 to negative fifth, 1 times 10 to negative 9, 1 times 10 to negative 11, 1 times 10 to negative 12, 1 times 10 to negative 14. So those are our H plus concentrations. As you can see, they get down lower. So this is the logarithmic scale, and it's a negative log, as you can see. Right? It's negative log, because a log scale it's an exponential, right? And so it's an order of magnitude. And so in the positive log, it'd be your log of one is zero, log of ten is one, log of a hundred is two, thousand is three, right? So you know four log four, right? It, it's 10,000. Well, here we're going negative because we're getting smaller. So that's why it's a negative log. Okay. Now, the pH kind of makes this is a problem, right? That we need to figure out. And so we need to know if we're acidic, neutral, or basic. All right. And so acidic, acidic means that your concentration of hydronium or, or H plus compared to that of hydroxide, that means acidic means we are bigger. Obviously neutral, they're the same. And then basic is the opposite. Hydronium is going to be smaller than hydroxide. All right, and that's just how uh, the solution works, okay? And so the pH is, that's how you calculate it. Now, let's talk about dilutions. All right, and then we'll get to the actual reactions next. So dilutions. As you know, many solutions, all right, shipping is expensive. Water is heavy, about eight pounds a gallon. So we make solutions a lot of times as concentrated as possible. Now, you don't always do this. For yourself, so if you're buying hydrogen peroxide, you don't get 100% hydrogen peroxide and have to dilute it down to 3% when you get it from the drug store. You get 3%, so you get 97% water in that. But that's probably safer because you wouldn't want 100% hydrogen peroxide at home, right? We get hydrochloric acid here, right? More concentrated than you can get at the store, and we dilute it, all right? And so the dilution formula would be molarity. 1, volume 1, equals molarity 2, volume 2. All right? Okay. Now, the moles do not change. Okay? The moles are not changing. Only the volume does. Okay? So now, this big, big note. Not... For reactions. All right. If you use this for reactions, because if you look, sometimes you'll see answer keys do it for reactions. You're like, well, Mr. D said not to use it for reactions, but they did it for reactions. Well, if it's a one to one to one to one ratio, it works. 
if it's not a one to one to one ratio, it doesn't work. And I don't give credit for it, right? Because it's not a dilution. I don't like that. Okay, it's a mathematical shortcut, but we I don't like doing the shortcuts if we don't know. We're still learning, so we're not doing shortcuts. Okay. So this is for dilution. And so for example, let's do a problem. What volume? 12 molar HCL must be used to prepare half a liter of a 0.4 molar solution of HCL. All right, so we have M1V1 equals M2V2. M1V1, M2, V2. M1 looks like it's 12 molar. What volume of that is the question? M2 is 4.0 molar. And V2 is half a liter. And so now we're just solving. I have 12 molar V1. I have 4 molar and V2. So it looks like V1 would be 4 times 0 0.5, which is 2 divided by 12, 1 sixth, or 0 0.017. No, 017, 0.17. Uh, liters. So there we go. That's a dilution. The next topic, which is important, very important, this is a very, very important topic, is solution stoichiometry. All right, I mean, we're going to highlight this one. Okay? No. So many reactions are done in solution, right? And we like to know uh, the amounts. Okay? The amounts. All right, so now, what do we have here? All right, there's two very important relationships that we're going to talk about, and then how to do these calculations. All right, we got to know how to do these calculations, which is good. All right. And so, if you remember... Mass divided by molar mass equals moles. So before we used to do this, we would have, you know, the units. We'd weigh something out in grams. And then we use the molar mass where you'd have grams per mole, and you'd get the moles. All right? And that's what we wanted. Okay? That's when we had solids, and we were weighing things out. Now, right, number of moles is molarity times volume. All right? So your moles that we just had, would equal molarity multiplied by the volume. But what I like to do is take the volume in liters, right? Because that's my amount. And that is multiplying that by your molarity of moles per liter which is our ratio and that's going to equal your moles just like here we had our amount and our ratio All right amount ratio so volume is the amount Molarity is the ratio. So we used to do mass as the amount, 
and molar mass is the ratio. Now we're doing volume as the amount and molarity as the ratio, right? Now, sometimes it's convenient to work in millimoles because if you have milliliters as your volume, right, you can do, right, um, you can still do moles, liters, but that would give you millimoles. You don't have to do the millimoles, okay? Especially in Chem 1, I'm not worried about it. I do a lot in Chem 2, but Chem 1, we don't do it much. And that's okay. But it's convenient sometimes. Let's, let's math. All right, let's dive into a problem. Now, some of you know this, some of you don't. Before, there was like iPhones and Samsung phones and Android phones and camera phones. We actually had cameras with film in it. Right? And you had to develop those films, right? And you had to take pictures and you didn't see what the picture looked like. Right? You just took the picture. So sometimes you took two or three just to hope that everybody was looking and smiling. Right? And so now, right, back then you had to develop the pictures. Now it's all digital, right? You don't have to develop anything, you just print them. But back then you had to develop. And silver bromide uh, was dissolved by adding sodium thiosulfate. All right? And so we want to dissolve 0.225 grams of silver bromide. The question is, what volume of this concentration of, of sodium thiosulfate should be used? All right, so we have, what do we have to start with? We have 0 0.225 grams of silver bromide. I know the molarity is 0 0.138 molar. And I don't know the milliliters. That's the question. All right. So now, is the equation balanced? Yes. Is it a limiting reactant problem? No, because I don't know the information of both reactants. I'm trying to figure out how much reactant to use. So which one has the amount? The amount is right there. So we'll take our 0 0.225 grams of silver bromide. And we're in grams. So like just like we just talked about, what goes on the bottom? Grams of silver bromide. We should probably go to one mole of silver bromide. How many grams? Well, silver is... Uh, 107.87 plus bromine, uh, 79.9. I got 187.77. And now we know that moles of silver bromide on the bottom, moles of sodium thiosulfate. And it's a two to one, right? So it, just like we did before, right? We started with the mass. Now we got the molar mass to moles, mole ratio. And now one more ratio, right? Moles of sodium sulfate. Right, and if we look, it's 0 0.138 moles for every 1,000 milliliters because we want milliliters, right? And so that number goes right there. So if we do that, the 0.225 divided by 187.77 times 2 divided by 0.138 times 1,000, I get 17.4. All right, so what do we have here? We have an amount, molar mass, which is a ratio, the mole ratio, molarity now, which is a ratio. So we're still using ratios to convert, but 
Now we got molarity. All right. Number two. Why don't you pause this right now? Try to do this one. Now, the hardest part about this one is writing the balanced chemical equation. But why don't you pause, try, and see what happens? All right, hope you paused it. All right. And let's dive in to what you get. First thing we need to do is write the balanced chemical equation. Lead 2, PV2 plus, nitrate, NO3 minus, with sodium, NA plus, chloride, Cl minus. All right, so I have PV, NO3, 2, and we know that's in solution because I got a molarity, plus NaCl, switch dance partners because we got uh, PB and then CL2 and that's going to be you don't know plus NaNO3 and that's always going to be those are that's a very soluble compound now technically this is a solid I'm not worried about it right now um, if you're using your if you're able to use your notes you would then need to know that lead 2 is not soluble with chloride all right, now let's, what do we have? The question right away in this is what volume of the 0.75 molar lead to nitrate in milliliters is required to react completely with one liter of 2.25 molar sodium chloride in solution. So let's write down what we have here. I have zero 0 0.750 molar lead to, and I don't know the milliliters. That's the question. And then we have 2.25 molar sodium chloride, and we know I have 1.00 liters. Now, the first thing I need to do now is check to make sure we're balanced. One lead, one lead, good. Two nitrates, one nitrate, not good. I need a two in front of the sodium nitrate. Now I got two sodiums and one sodium. Make that two sodiums, two sodiums, two chlorines now and two chlorines now are two chlorides. Good, now we're balanced. That was a very important step. All right, so now, I'm gonna start with my amount. 1.00 liters of NaCl. And then on the bottom, our molarity, one liter of sodium chloride solution is 2.25 moles of sodium chloride. All right, that's right here. That's very important. So now we're using volume times molarity. And then mole ratio, two moles of sodium chloride it requires one mole of lead to nitrate. And then, what ratio we're going to use? Well, we know that 0 0.750 moles of lead to nitrate. And we want milliliters, 1,000 milliliters of lead to nitrate. So I like writing all those units out, all the formulas, because now we know exactly what you, what you got, all right? It's not always easy to write in color. I have lots of colors. It's very easy on the screen, on the tablet. But if, as long as you're writing out the units, okay, I would encourage that. And maybe it's even easier to highlight afterwards if you really need color. All right, if you do this, liter times 2.25 divided by 2 times 1,000 divided by 0.75, I think I get 1,500. Fifteen hundred milliliters. All right. Next. All right. Number three. When aqueous solutions of sodium sulfate, so sodium Na plus sulfate SO four two minus plumbus, which should be lead two, right? Lead two uh, PV two plus nitrate. 
and O3 minus are mixed, that two sulfate precipitates. All right, so let's write down this reaction. I have Na2SO4 in solution plus PBNO32 in solution going to lead to sulfate, PB. So for solid, and then let's lift over sodium nitrate. Okay, and now balance two sodiums. I need two there. One sulfate, one sulfate, one lead, one lead, two nitrate. So we're good. All right, let's write down. We're looking for how many grams of lead. To, so that's the question right there. How many grams? That's our question. So we have 500 milliliters of lead 2 nitrate. So I have 500 milliliters of 0 0.1 molar lead 2 nitrate. And I have 500 milliliters, 0 0.25 molar sodium sulfate. Ooh, this looks like it's an eliminating reactant problem. All right. So let's attack it. Just like when we had it before, I had to go to moles, right? Because I need to know how many moles of each produce. And so if I do this, what is it? Remember, volume times molarity equals moles, right? So if I take my volume of 500 milliliters, and we do it as 1,000 milliliters, 0 0.25 moles for sodium sulfate, right? If we do that, I think I get 0.125, right? Same thing with lead. Now, you can do it, I'll do it this way. You can do 0 0.500 liters times one liter is 0 0.10 mole, right? You can do it that way, right? And that's fine as well. And I get 0 0.05 moles. Living reactant. Well, I always divide by the coefficient. The coefficients are one. So 0 0.125 divided by one. And 0 0.05 divided by one. So it means my lead is my limiting reactant. I'm gonna start with my moles and go from there. So now, if we start with our moles of lead to nitrate, 0 0.05 moles. Actually, it's 0 0.050, isn't it? PBNO32, get my sig figs right. Mole ratio, looks like moles of PBNO32 on the bottom. Moles of PBSO4, let you sulfate on top. And those happen to be one to one. Very nice. And then we have what on the bottom? We have one mole of PBSO4, lead to sulfate, and lead is what? 207.2, and we have sulfate, which is 3207, and we have oxygen, which is 16, and there's four of them. So I got 303.27 grams of PBSO4. Now, if we do that math, right, I get 15.1635, and I have two sig figs, so it's 15 grams of lead to sulfate. Pretty good. So there's a limiting reaction problem. All right, number four, try it. Try it, okay? I want you to try it and pause me. And then if you get it, great. 
If not, that's fine too. Okay? Because we got a couple more to do. All right. Hopefully you paused me and tried it. Okay? We're calculating the mass, right? Calculate the mass of solid sodium chloride that must be added to 1.5 liters of 0.1 molar silver nitrate to precipitate all the silver ions in the form of silver chloride. So what do we have? NaCl. Plus silver nitrate. We're making silver chloride. Solid. Precipitate. And then what's left over? Sodium nitrate. Alright. We have how many grams here is your question. And we have 1.50 liters. 0 0.100 molar. All right, let's go to work. Is it balanced? Uh, one sodium, one sodium. One chloride, one chloride. One silver, one silver. One nitrate, one nitrate. Yes. So start with our amount that we know. 1.50 liters of AgNO3, silver nitrate. And we're going to go to what? Liters on the bottom. One liter is of silver nitrate. 0 0.100 moles. And then what? Mole ratio. One mole of silver nitrate on the bottom. And one mole of sodium chloride. And then we know that one mole of sodium chloride. Again, hopefully you, you always need your periodic table out, right? Sodium is 22.99 plus 35.45 for chloride. And that gives me 58.44. All right, so if we do this math. All right, point, uh, 1.5 times 0.1 times 58.44, I get 8.766, which is three sig figs. We get three, we got three, 8.77. There we go. Hopefully that's what you got too. All right. Ooh, this is a fun one. Now we got an acid base one. What volume? Right away is the question. What volume? Of 0.0521 molar barium hydroxide is required to neutralize. That's a new word. Neutralize. What does that mean? So that means the moles of hydroxide equal the moles of acid. If that makes sense. Right? So that means we have equal moles of acid and base in an acid-base reaction. So the pH is 7, ideally. In this case... It wouldn't be, but we, we don't need to go down further than that. We've got that much of that concentration of phosphoric acid. Balanced chemical equation. Barium hydroxide. All right. And that is, says what volume. And we know we have uh, 0 0.0521 molar. I want to know the volume. milliliters or liters it doesn't say reacts with h3po4 and i'll use you know i highlighted orange i'll use blue 14.20 milliliters 0 0.141 molar all right what do we get on the other side well it's an acid base reaction i have the base written first as you can see and then all right, and so we get barium and phosphate would be my salt. So Ba, Ba3, PO42. Now, you don't necessarily know that's a solid, but you don't necessarily know that unless you're looking at your chart. And then water. All right, balancing. Start with your salt, barium. I got three barium, so I need three in front of barium hydroxide. I got two phosphates, two in front of phosphoric acid. 
And then it looks like I have six waters coming. All right. So now we'll take our 14.20 milliliters of phosphoric acid. And we're going to multiply that by, for every 1,000 milliliters of phosphoric acid that we deploy, we will have 0 0.141 moles. And then what? We have mole ratio, right? Moles of phosphoric acid to moles of barium hydroxide. And it looks like I have a two with phosphoric acid and a three with barium hydroxide. But we're not done. Looks like I need to put my molarity here. So we have 0 0.0521 moles of barium hydroxide. And I'm gonna go to 1000 milliliters. Now, it doesn't matter what you go to. Why would I use milliliters? Because this thousand now and this thousand are canceled. So I don't have to worry about doing that math. How nice is that? If I need to convert to liters, I have to convert to liters. All right. So what do we equal here? You get your 14.20 times your 0 0.141 times your 3 divided by 2. And you divide by 0 0.04. Five two one. I get fifty seven point six. I think that's what you get. Let me try that again. Point two times point one one. Hopefully that's what you got. Yep, that's what I got. Hoist and roll. There we go. All right. Last one. Okay. Another acid base. You have... Highlight out. 10 milliliter sample of vinegar, which is acetic acid. It's titrated with... 0 0.5062 molar NaOH, and that much is required to reach the equivalence point. Question A, what's the molarity? And then B, it gives you the density. What is the mass percent of acetic acid? All right, let's do this. First thing we have to do, balance chemical equation, acetic acid. HC2H3O2 plus sodium hydroxide NaOH. Switch your dance partners, your salt, sodium acetate. And water. Okay, we have 10.00 milliliters. I need to know the molarity. And then here we have 0 0.5062 molar and 16.58 milliliters. I rebalanced. One acetate, one acetate, one sodium, one sodium. Yes, we are balanced. All right, so the amount we have is the 16.58 milliliters of sodium hydroxide all right what goes on the bottom well it's your 1000 milliliters of sodium hydroxide is 0 0.5062 moles then we got our mole ratio moles of sodium hydroxide moles of HC2H3O2 and it's one to one. All right, so now I'm looking for the molarity and remember molarity, I'm gonna come up here. Molarity is moles per liter. I have a liter 
I don't have the moles. So I just need to get the moles, which is what we have. All right. So we got our 16.58 milliliters times the 0 0.5062 divided by the 1,000. I get 0 0.00839, well, I got four six figs, 8393 moles, right, of vinegar. Now, the volume... 10.00 milliliters, and you guys know, I'll write it out, you guys, hopefully we're not doing this anymore, we know a thousand milliliters is one liter, and so we have 0 0.01000 liters, and so if we do this math here, we'll bring our 0 0.00839 three moles of HC2H3O2 over our 0 0.01000 liters. If you do that math, I get 0 0.8393 molar HC2H3O2. Not bad. All right, then we have the density. What's the density? All right, and so we want the mass percent. And mass percent, this number here, is grams of HC2H3O2 per grams of solution times 100%. All right, well, let's start. If we know we have 0. 8393 moles of HC2H3O2 per 1000 milliliters of solution. Let's start converting. Can I go from moles of acetic acid to grams of acetic acid? I think so. We know that one mole of HC2H3O2, right? So if we do the math, you have one, four hydrogens, so four times 1.01, .01, two carbons, two times 12.01, .01, .01, and I get 60.06. All right, now density. We know I have for every one milliliter of solution, I have 1.006 grams of solution. So now I'm in grams of acetic acid. Oh, I wanted to, this guy. Grams of acetic acid and grams of solution. So now all I do is times by 100%. So that, so if we do this math, I get 5.01%, 5.011% actually, if I have my four sig figs, 5.011% HC2H3O2 by mass. All right. So that is solution stoichiometry, pH, and some dilutions and some examples. Hopefully that worked for you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Take care, guys. Goodbye.